Hello students, Mr. L here again. Welcome to your second tutorial in our spaceship project for Computer Programming 11. In our first tutorial, we got our spaceship up and running, being able to move around and able to shoot lasers that delete themselves once they reach the edge of the world. We worked with accessing the world class. We worked with the get mouse info that we can now track the mouse movements. A lot of cool functionality added to our game. And now with our next step, we want to be able to add different types of weapons so that we have some more unique gameplay that can occur in this world here. And to do so, in a minute here, we're going to be learning about something called hierarchy. For now, to get us kind of on the right track of thinking, we're going to think about adding an, another weapon to our ship, to our hero, and think about why this is a kind of a clunky way to do it. Maybe I can go a new subclass, and let's create one called Fireball, with a Fireball image. So this Fireball now exists, and we've got to think about what types of behavior do we want this Fireball to have? Well, we've already defined a lot of the behavior that the Fireball might want to also mimic here in our laser class. Let's think about actually copying and pasting all this information here. However, we're going to have an error that just popped up that we have the same name, so I'm going to quickly rename this to Fireball and then have the constructor be the same name as I compile and make sure this all works. It updated, it looks good. So this is the same logic as our laser did because it needs to have a speed, it needs to have damage, it needs to have a constructor, it needs to have getters and setters, it needs to be able to act and move, it needs to be able to check the set of the screen boundaries, it needs all that logic to be defined here as well. Basically everything about the fireball is going to be at least very similar. Now maybe we want to customize things. Maybe we want its damage to be 5 instead of 1. Okay, I can just change that number. Maybe my speed is going to be different. Well, I already tell the speed when I create the object in my hero class, so that will be easily editable already. So some of its private attributes will be different, but most of its processing logic is the same. And whenever we see repeated information, repeated logic, that tells us that we need to be thinking about modularity and how we can make this work in a more sophisticated way. We're going to unlock a new piece of understanding called hierarchies here to be able to do this. And what you should do before you continue watching this video is to go back into your notes and make sure that you've read up to and beyond this page called inheritance. Inheritance is this talk about hierarchy that we're referring to. And you should be reading through probably to close to the end of the document. And then let this video kind of fill in the gaps for you and see it practically implemented. But make sure you've read this through before I continue too much further. I'll pause for a sec to let you go do that. Hit play again once you've read it to come back here and have some more guidance on what to do with your next step. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you went through and read through that PowerPoint info. Here's what we're going to be doing. Rather than creating a brand new actor each time for individual weapons, we are going to create an actor that we are going to call projectile. And we're not going to assign an image to it. What we're doing is we're creating a rule set that all projectiles, all weapons, maybe you could have called this weapon if you want to, all weapons will be following. And then from there, we are going to have not actors, but we're going to have subclasses of this projectile that are going to be called the different weapon names that we have here. Now, you'll notice I'm going to come across a problem. When I try and create a laser, it says the name already exists. So what I'm going to do here is just, this is going to mess up my code for now, but it's kind of the clunky way around this for now. I'm just going to name this laser2 and fireball2 for a sec. It's going to make, mess up some of my code, but that's okay for now. So it's going to change these names here, no problem. So now when I create a new subclass of my projectile, I want, let's start with the uh, laser. Now it's going to let me name it that. And we'll see that this laser is now considered what we call a child of projectile. It's attached, it's beneath, it's a lower part of the hierarchy of this projectile class. And here's what this allows us to do. Under projectile, I'm going to take all this, these rules that I apply to all of my projectiles, and I'm just going to copy them over into my projectile class. Now I have an, a naming error. I have to remember I'm in projectile, so I'm going to rename my class 
projectile, and I'm going to rename my constructor projectile. Everything else should be functioning just fine. Now that I have all this functionality saved in here, I don't actually need this laser or fireball that I created in the first place anymore. So I'm actually going to delete these. Goodbye laser. Goodbye fireball. And now I just need to deal with how we set up this hierarchy in the first place. Now I wonder what it's being confused about right now. Probably something in my hero creation. We'll deal with that a little bit later. So here's what we need to consider for now. I also might want another projectile, the fireball. I'm going to create this as a subclass as well. So I'll ignore what's going on in the background here. We have some other coding errors to fix. Actually, there's a small error in how it's showing me my errors. So what I'm going to do really quick is I'm just going to reload my project. That's going to allow, hopefully, it to pop up when I reopen my classes here. All my info to show what's going on. Looks like it's happy now. So there was a little glitch going on when I was editing all that stuff. You might feel the same, see the same thing. Just close and reopen your projects. Sweet. My fireball and my laser don't have any special code in it just yet. My projectile, oh man, so many weird things going on, has all of the logic for how these things should be constructed, how they should act, how they can check their boundaries. Now remember, act tells it to move with its unique speed. It also tells it to check the boundaries to delete itself if it's near the edge of the world. And so now that I want to be able to have my laser and my fireball follow these rules, there's a special way that I can do this. Let's start with the laser. What I can do, let's just erase the instructions for the act method. I'm going to create a constructor for my laser. And in this constructor, I'm going to use a term that we've seen one other spot so far. This one, super. Super allows us to access methods or constructors from something one step above us in the hierarchy. Galaxy, our world, is built on these rules from the actual Greenfoot world class that has all this functionality and all this information in it. It has a constructor in it that builds the world with different sizes. When I'm saying super, I'm accessing the constructor that has the same number of expected inputs. This world constructor expects three pieces of information, world width, world height, and cell size. By going super, I'm telling it, find the constructor, because I'm in the constructor section, that accepts three inputs, and then use that one. It's allowed to use it because it's one step below it in its hierarchy. I'm going to be trying to do the same thing here. My laser is just one step below projectile in the hierarchy, meaning because it's attached to projectile, it's allowed to access all the information in projectile directly through a super call. So what I'm going to be saying is I want to access the constructor that projectile has defined. And notice here that projectile constructor wants s our speed to be sent to it, and it's going to set the local speed and damage of its information uh, to these numbers here. Now, right now, I'm going to send the speed that I'm going to take in from my laser as its speed. What this is going to do is when I create a laser, it's going to look here and go, OK, creating a laser is taking in information for it. But how am I creating it? I'm not creating it with logic in here. I'm creating it with the equivalent logic in its parent class, the projectile right here. Now, one other thing I want to take notice of is that maybe now is a good time to change this. Maybe my damage needs to be different for different objects. So maybe my constructor should take in two things, speed and damage. Now, when I come over here to laser, I need to be actually also setting the damage. So let's think about this here. I want to have a private int for damage. 
and maybe every time I make a laser, I want its damage to equal five, meaning that I can send this five damage to the constructor of the projectile, its parent class. So now when laser is created, it's accessing this information. All right, might seem a little bit clunky, might seem a little bit weird. It takes some time for us usually to get some deeper understandings of the uh, of this kind of superclass idea. But here's where it gets really, really powerful and where it saves us all this clunky copying and pasting. How does this laser behave? Here's the thing. The laser behaves just like any projectile. It needs to move at the speed it's set to and it needs to check the boundaries. The rules for this action are all here in my projectile class. How do I access that in my laser? Before now, you might have copied and pasted all that information into here, but that's not how we do things when we're being more sophisticated coders. I wanna access my parent class's act method. Super, to access my parent class. That means laser can access projectile. And in super, we have a method already doing all this behavior, act. With this simple notation, what we're telling our laser is to use all the same behavior that projectile does without having to retype it all here. It just directly accesses that same behavior. And what is it gonna use in terms of its speed? Well, I told it to create the speed as the speed for my laser and the damage as the damage for my laser. So now this local copy of projectile will know that speed and damage are set to whatever I told it in laser. And then when it acts, it's going to act with all these rules, but using the information from the laser. So it's a kind of a shortcut way of accessing functionality in a hierarchical manner. So let's think for a sec here. Um, our laser, needs to be able to do one more thing here because we haven't yet, um, actually, let's just test this out for a sec here. Back in my hero class, my laser is going to still be a new laser, the new laser class, and I'm sending it five as the speed, so its constructor is gonna work just fine, and it sets rotation and adds the object laser here, and let's just test this out if it's gonna actually load, let's see. Why is this being so finicky right now? I haven't done anything in there yet, so nothing could have gone wrong here. Projectiles, expecting two things. I'm sending it to in my super. I'm acting properly here. My hero class, I'm tracking a mouse. I'm still using the same shoot methodology my process keys here. Got some weird error going back. I'm gonna create another video for the next step here while I kind of troubleshoot this in the background. If there's anything important to point out, I'll show you, otherwise it might just be a glitch. In the next video, we are going to think about adding on another weapon, doing the fireball addition here, and then I'll get you guys to be doing some more challenge tasks after that point. Be right back.